off live. All right, so we are live, everyone. My name is Jesse, and I am with Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. For those joining us for the first time, we are all about bringing conservation, adventure, and science into classrooms around the world. And of course, there are no classrooms right now. All of you are joining at home on YouTube, and so we still appreciate you joining us as we continue to highlight amazing scientists, explorers, and facilities from around the globe. Today, we continue our epic SciComm Storytime series. So every 2 p.m. Eastern or 11 a.m. Pacific time for the next foreseeable future, many, many weeks to come, we will be hosting an all-star of science communication. And today's is about a topic that's close to my heart. We are joined live by Miss Mallory, the curious conservationist who turns fear into fascination by taking some of the weirdest, slimiest, grossest, creepy, crawly creatures in the world and sharing their stories in a way that highlights the amazing side of them that some of us might not get to see otherwise. Today, we are living up to that reputation by highlighting leeches, something that most of us sort of squirm at the name of, but Mallory dives in headlong to learn more, and I'm excited to see how this is going to go. We've got some pretty cool pictures and stories for you today. So without further ado, thank you so much for joining us, Mallory, and take it away. Thank you so much, everyone. Wow, what a great intro. I need to keep you in my back pocket. I could definitely use that more often. Uh, but yes, uh, so I travel the world working with scientists and researchers and passionate people to learn the truth behind the animals that we're so afraid of. It's really amazing the effects that like movies and um, just rumors, I guess, that people come up with that really kind of put these guys in a bad light. And if you really think about it, that has so much influence on us because we think about like mosquitoes. Well, not very many people talk about bad things about mosquitoes, yet they kill more people than any other animal that we're so afraid of. So I love talking about how cool our creepy crawly creatures are. So we're talking, as I mentioned, leeches. And yes, I have about, oh, 10 leeches as pets that I also use for education purposes because I just think they're so cool. So leeches are segmented worms. They're part of the earthworm family and not all leeches drink blood. So some of them will eat vegetation. Some of them eat other worms. It's really, really cool how diverse that group is. But today we're really going to focus on those blood suckers because they get the worst rep. And today we are going to talk about leeches in conservation, leeches in neuroscience, and leeches in modern medicine. So as you can see, this is going to be, this is going to debunk one myth right up front is leeches are not out to suck everyone's blood. Even though this is a blood sucking leech, you can tell he's really not interested in sucking my blood, which is really kind of, um, against everything that we think about leeches. Woo, but they are slippery and slimy. So leeches don't have lungs, just like worms. They breathe through their skin, which is why they are so slimy. They need that slime to exchange gases. They suck the oxygen in, and then they push that carbon dioxide out. So it's really important, whether it's a leech or maybe a worm you find on the sidewalk, to make sure that they stay nice and wet because they need that moisture to breathe. If not, they suffocate. But let's talk about leeches in conservation. So leeches are being used by scientists to uncover cryptic animals. And cryptic meaning they're really good at hiding. And so what they go, what they do is they go into these jungles, they capture a bunch of leeches, and then they study the blood inside the leeches, and they're able to differentiate between leech blood and mammal blood. And by doing this, they can find out what mammals are around that maybe their camera traps can't find. If you don't know what a camera trap is, a camera trap is a camera that they put that has a sensor and it takes pictures every time something passes by. So that can sometimes take many, many months in order to uncover these animals where capturing a bunch of leeches may only take about four days. So not only does it save a bunch of time, but it also saves a bunch of money, which is pretty cool. Uh, next, is leeches in neuroscience. Now, neuroscience is the way that um, our body kind of communicates with each other, right? So how our nerves work and how those chemicals go in and out and tell us what to do. Well, in the 1930s, two men won the Nobel Peace Prize by figuring out how nerves talk to each other. And the way they did that was with leeches. Pretty crazy, right? because leeches have the really a very similar type of nerve cell that is very close to human nerve cells. 
And so they're able to study nerves in leeches because humans' nerves are just so fast and there's so many. So by using a leech cell, which is much bigger and much slower, they can see how those nerves communicate. So that's pretty interesting as well, I thought at least. And last but not least, we're gonna talk about leeches in medicine. Now leeches in medicine, they have been in human medicine for thousands of years. Egyptians have been using leeches in medicine. Now what we used to think, oh no, when we think of leeches in medicine, we might think of the olden times where when people were sick, they would put leeches on them and hopefully the leech would take out the bad blood and leave the good blood which we know that isn't true if we know anything about the circulatory system. And so what they do now is actually use them in microsurgery. So the way it works is kind of cool. So say you have, this is your finger, and your thumb, your fingernail. Say you were, can you guys see that okay, kind of? Okay, so say you were paying attention and you chop your poor finger off, oh my goodness. So scientists can reattach the skin, but what they can't attach are all those tiny little capillaries that are so important for the tissue to live. There's so much stuff. And when it chops, it crushes all those little vessels. But what the leech does that no doctor has been able to do yet is when they put the leech on top, that leech has so much sucking power, so much special stuff in their saliva that is able to pull all that blood back up into that tissue, which is able to save that tissue. If it wasn't for the leeches, typically that tissue would not have enough oxygen, not enough blood, and it would die and fall off. So leeches are pretty amazing. And I know our 15 minutes are almost up. So what I really wanna cover is how we can, what we do, what to do if you have a leech on you. Well, first of all, you don't have to worry about a leech giving you diseases. Unlike say mosquitoes or ticks that have really bad stuff in their saliva, leeches don't. What you do have to worry about, however, let me see if I can get another leech. What you do have to worry about is them regurgitating their last meal into you. So leeches can go six months without eating. And so, gosh, he's holding on good. There we go. And so, I know. So what you want to do if you have a leech, this is one of my big ones. This is Henry, by the way. So Henry is pretty cool. So what you want to do if you have a leech on you is they have two suckers. They have an anchoring sucker and an a slurping sucker basically where their jaws are. So you want to take a credit card and basically scrape the leech off. If you try to light it on fire or if you try to pull it, it's going to make them very angry. And we don't want that because when they're angry, that's when they throw up their last meal, which could have been from a rat back into you. And that's how you get sick. But that's it. There's my 15 minutes of leeches. <laughs> I like how the leech gets angry when you light it on fire. That was amazing. I know. Who uh, would it? <laughs> Mallory, actually, you're a little early and we did start oh, late. So if you wanted to show us any of those pictures you were showing me, I know we had some iffy screen share stuff before, but if you wanted to show oh. us some gross out stuff, we've got some a pretty excited YouTube group so far and you're more than welcome to. That oh, fun. fantastic. Okay. Do it. So um, this is not for the weak stomach, but I really want to show you how great leeches are in medicine. In addition to leeches, maggots are also really important. So leeches are USDA medical devices, which means that, you know what, I wonder, should I do the desktop instead? Yeah, try that. Let's try desktop if it didn't work the other way. We're going to make it work. Besides, no matter what, we've already got some really cool leeches. We had Henry. I mean, how do you beat Henry? I know Henry is pretty amazing. Okay, so we're going to go to desktop two and share. Okay. okay. Are you seeing it okay? It looks great, yeah. Okay, so let's go to... Sorry, guys, I am still so new to <laughs> all of this stuff. 
No worries at all. Okay. Not the fun. And while you're getting this ready, while you're getting the screen up, uh, you've got slide, yep, slide one and two. Just a note for everyone on YouTube, get ready to type in questions. We're going to take tons of questions from Mallory because I'm so excited to hear her answers already. But yes, you're in slide two. We've got a cool leech mouth. Take us away. Yeah, so leeches have three mouths and each one of those mouths has about a hundred teeth. So you can tell they have a really, they have big, big, tons of teeth. Um, this is microscopic level, so you're not going to really see this when you look at a leech. But they do have that signature um, kind of three-lined or Y wound. So leeches are used in medicine, as I mentioned. So the government has said leeches do such a good job at taking care of business, basically, that we're going to say that they are absolutely allowed in hospitals, that it's not just like what would they call it? Like quack medicine, like they would, they used to think of. Okay, so the down and dirty. So leeches are really fantastic about bringing the blood to the surface. And as I mentioned, they have really special stuff in their saliva that prevents the blood from clotting. And the reason why that's so great is it's constantly going to be pushing more and more blood into that wound, into that, that I guess, pathway of what the leech is using to breathe. And as you can see on the bottom, we have a gentleman that lost his toes, but the leech is attached, will bring fresh blood to that wound and allow the, heal, the wound to heal. Okay, we're getting a little grosser. So this one, this guy you can tell has a really bad foot fungus problem. Actually, it's a type, it's a wound that has not healed properly. And so the leeches are able to bring fresh blood to that wound and allow that new skin to grow, which is able to remove all that other gross stuff. And last but not least, what we were talking about earlier is when you, when you cut off a finger or an appendage, there is no more blood that's able to go to that appendage. And if you look in the top right picture, you can see that it's bruising and it's starting to get congested, venous congestion. And so what we wanna do is prevent that. So by putting a leech on it, they are pulling that blood through that wound and reestablishing all that blood connection that's needed and then you develop a healthy finger again. But if you guys are interested, um, I do Miss Mallory Nature class live Monday, Wednesday, Fridays um, at 1 p.m. Pacific time. And this is a picture of me doing a blubber mint, which was really fun to talk about how whales stay warm in very cold waters. And then for the younger crowd, I also do um, story time where we highlight an animal and then also read a book. And that's it. How cool is that? So yeah, come back on a screen share. Hopefully this all works so well, but that was fantastic. And the, the hey. medical pictures we've ever had in one of our sessions. And we've got <laughs> so uh, for, yeah, for everyone tuning in on YouTube, just let me know where you're joining from. Type in questions in the chat bar and I will pass along as many as I can to Mallory. Uh, but let's start again. Who do we have people from? We have people from Wisconsin. We have people from Ontario, North Carolina and more. So we appreciate you guys all tuning in today. Um, oh, wow. So now I just got to get back to, take can you your time. see me at least? I can hear you fine. It should just be a big red button on the top that gets you to screen share, but we'll figure that out in a second. That says stop share. There you go. Perfect. We're yes. Back. Wow. I'm going to a lesson today. All right. So uh, we had another YouTube channel, a really, really popular nature YouTube channel tune into yours. The Wild Report wants to know, after the leech sucks the blood back into the tissue, can the capillaries regrow? Yes, absolutely. So that's what doctors are using them for, is by pulling that blood, not only is that blood bringing healthy oxygen to that tissue, but it's also bringing healthy oxygen to the outer walls of the blood vessels. So it's helping all the way around. Fantastic. We have the Young family joining in. So they've been, I swear, in like half our sessions in the last few weeks, so we really appreciate them tuning in. They always ask the same question. It's a great question. What is your favorite part of your job? And I'm not sure you're going to be able to pick one, Mallory. No. So what's really kind of neat or cool is this actually isn't my job. It's just my hobby. I love it so very much. And just like you guys are doing um, with, your, with your kind of platform is you do it because you're so passionate about it. But my favorite thing is when I get the reactions from the kiddos. Um, I love when they're like, wow, I used to be so afraid of them. And now I think they're just so cool. So kind of changing perspectives is always my favorite thing. Fantastic. Um, all right, we had a question from William in Sudbury. He wants to know, can leeches suck your blood through a plastic glove? So I mean, in your hand, obviously they can suck your blood, but no, not if you have a glove on. No, so what, it depends on how thick the glove is. Now remember they have teeth and so they're able to pierce through thin 
membranes, thin material. So if your glove isn't very tight or it's not very thick, then it can. Um, however, for some reason, leeches really aren't, they don't like the taste of gloves very much, unless it's a very hungry leech. So as long as you're wearing gloves, you should be okay. Okay, good to know. Uh, John wants to know, do most medical centers have leeches on site to be used or is this something they have to bring in or order in or how does it work? So they don't really have leeches on hand. They typically have to order them in from special laboratories. So they're not collecting them from the wild like they used to. Now they're actually grown in laboratories around the US and they just put in an order, they're shipped overnight and then you get your leeches. What's, what I think is really cool about leeches is we think leeches are considered parasites, right? Because they harm their host in order to benefit themselves. But it was humans that actually made the leech almost go extinct because we were using them so much. So in the early 1800s, the European medical leech almost went extinct because we were harvesting them so much. So we're kind of like the parasite in that situation, huh? Huh, how about that? Very neat story. This is great. I'm having so much fun. Uh, all right, this is a neat question. You talked about leeches sort of regurgitating their last meal into us if they're, they're traumatized. If a snake bites you, if you have some sort of venom in you and a leech sucks your blood, does the leech get affected by that or not? Uh, so it could. However, we should know that when you are bit by a venomous snake, sucking out the venom is really not going to work because as soon as that venom hits your circulatory system, boom, it just goes all over the place. That's also why tourniquets aren't a good idea either. So and the leech, um, but because it's in your blood system and it's sucking up that blood, it will also get some of the venom as well. Yeah, but I love that that got brought in. Like, I, I love the thought process behind it. It's like, snake bite you. It's like, get some leeches, get them. Get them <laughs> Suck it out. Yeah. <laughs> no, sorry. You're too Don't late. It's amazing how fast our, our circulatory system works. It is. Um, all right, young family again. How long can leeches live? Oh, great question. So some leeches, like, for instance, the ones I have, live to be about maybe two to three years old. But there's some that can live decades. So there's still being research done on certain species, but for the most part, they're about two to five years. Yeah, I have a question that I, I've never heard of from anyone before. Do leeches have something that they prefer? So if there's multiple animals all in a woodland together, um, is there something that the leeches can sort of smell and sense and, and know that they want the most? So they are opportunistic um, feeders. However, there's some leeches that really prefer, say, reptiles or turtles. And I don't know if it's just because, I mean, they're not, they're not super smart animals, right? So uh, they just, they're more opportunistic. So if they know something that works, they're going to usually go for that. And then if something else kind of passes by, like a human leg, then they might take advantage of that too. Perfect. All right. And then a flip side of this question from someone on YouTube, is there anything that leeches won't go for? Like there's other creatures that they avoid, like the plague? I like the plague. I love that. Um, not that I really know of as far as, so for instance, like a, a leech that wants to eat only vegetation, decaying vegetation, won't go after blood meals. However, if it is a blood meal, they are probably going to go after anything that does work. Again, though, really, you have nothing to worry about with a leech. I'd be more worried about those mosquitoes that are buzzing around me or that tick that I might get more so than a leech that I might get in the water. Yeah, fantastic. I want to stress something. I forgot to mention it when we finished up. You talked about conservation uh, understanding through leeches. We did a session on that with a woman live in Madagascar who actually studies them and, and goes out to remote field sites to catch leeches and see what sort of animals that they have sucked the blood up, which is a really neat way of, of learning about that. Oh my goodness, I'll have to go back and watch that. I think that is so fascinating. I've put it in the chat bar for anyone who's interested and I'll send it to you directly when we're done. Please, that sounds so, was her name Sarah by chance? Uh, May, M-A-I. Mm -hmm. But I want Sarah, if there's a Sarah out there doing this too, let's get all the leech sessions going. Um, all right, uh, what are some predators to leeches? What eats them? Just about everything wants to eat a leech that was wanting to really eat a bug or a worm. Uh, so birds, smaller mammals, anything that basically can find them before they find, but anything that the predator can find the leech before the leech can find the predator. Perfect. And now you mentioned at the beginning that they're segmented worm. And so some people might know that if worms are chopped in half, maybe by accident and hopefully by accident, yeah. uh, they can become two full worms. Is that true of leeches as well? Uh, so that's actually a myth all in itself. When you cut a, a worm in half, majority of their heart is, they, so they, worms, for instance, have single chambered hearts. They have five, and that's closer to the head. So if you chop a worm in half, only the head side is actually going to know to reproduce, or sorry, to regenerate, where the backside is going to die. 
So you don't get two different worms, but what you are saying is actually really fascinating about the leech because scientists are working with the leech and studying leech because they have such great regenerative powers. And so they're hoping that by studying the brain of the leech that they can help us regenerate our nerve cells as well. How cool is that? So if you do cut off the tail though, like it will regrow a new one. Yes. How neat is that? See, this is something that's so fascinating with humans. I mean, we can regrow bones and heal bones and regrow skin, but if we lose a limb, we can't grow that back. And a lot of things in the amphibian family and, and worms and things can, can do that. Um, I'm so glad we got that brought up. Very yeah, good. nature is so amazing. But yeah, definitely don't try. So the only worm that you can cut in half and it'll do two is the flatworm. So they'll <laughs> grow two different ones. Freaky is that. I want to stress too for people at home, sponges. So like the things in the bottom of the ocean, you can run through a sieve and all the cells will recombine together and form the sponge again, which is really neat. Really? So, really? Isn't it true too with a starfish? They used to think that they could cut the starfish up and then all of a sudden the starfish are starting to basically create their own mini versions. That family is, of animals is really fascinating with its ability to regenerate. Yeah. So I need to check on that specifically, but probably, I mean, there's, anyway. We could go all day. <laughs> um, William wants to ask, how many different leech species are there? So Oh, that's such a good question. So I, I'm not, I can't say for sure, but I want to say it's over 4,000. Yeah, so a lot. And remember, not all of them drink blood, and there's some that are marine, some that are freshwater, some that are terrestrial. So just by comparison, because 4,000 is a big number, but just to understand it. So all the mammals in the world, all the bats, primates, antelope, mice, rats, whatever, is about 6,000 species. So there's almost as many leech species as there are all the mammals, everything with fur that we've ever seen uh, and, and found in the world. So super I cool. know, it's so crazy. So Mallory, while we're waiting for a few more questions uh, from people on YouTube, I just wanted to ask, is there anything that specifically that you love? Today you've highlighted leeches. Are there creatures that are your favorite creatures that you just love above all others? Oh my goodness. So my top five favorite animals are, of course, the leech. I love um, American eels. They have such an incredible migration. Not very many people know they start in the ocean. They migrate through estuaries into our streams. They live their life there about 12 to 15 years. And then they have to go all the way back to the ocean to spawn and lay their eggs where they die. I mean, that's such an incredible uh, just migration. I mean, it's just so crazy that very many people don't know about those American eels. I also love hagfish, which are primitive. Um, yeah, I love your reaction. They're these primitive fish that live at the bottom of the ocean that are so important. They're scavengers, but they're just so cool. And they have this slime that is more like um, spider silk that expands in water. And scientists are using them to learn about different kinds of fabrics they can make. And even the Navy's using them as defense mechanisms. So those are probably like my top three um, and maggots are also really cool in medicine too. So medicine, how did you get interested in, in medical applications of animals? Was it something you stressed today? Is it from a personal experience or how did you get so keen? Actually it is. I was in Asia doing some stuff and I remember this guy had this wound and he's like, yeah, it's not healing. Um, I'm probably just going to put a leech on it. And I was like, what? A leech? Are you kidding me? And he was telling me all about this. And then I started working and reading and joined a, commi a committee called Biotherapy Committee Foundation and started learning about all the things that they do with leeches and maggots in, in the US. And it's just incredible. Yeah, very cool. Um, now, this is something that we've dealt with with a lot of conservationists that go to remote jungles. They've talked about the fact that if you stay still, can actually hear leeches coming across the forest canopy towards you. Have you ever experienced, so you're nodding, so this is a true story. Have you ever experienced it personally? Uh, I've never experienced, as far as experience, so if you sit still, you hear a lot of things creeping and crawling. I don't know for sure if it's a leech or not. I just know there's a lot of leeches in the jungle, and so you kind of think that, but the way that leeches, quote, unquote, hunt is they actually will attach themselves to a leaf, and they just kind of sit there and wait. And then when something brushes by them, they catch on. Now, some of them will slink to you, but more often than not, they just want to stay still. So whether they're coming towards me, I'm not sure. But I definitely love the sit still and listen component to it. Fantastic. Um, all right, a bunch of more questions. I like this question, never heard it before. Will a blood sucking leech suck the blood of another leech? Yes. So I learned that unfortunately the hard way. Uh, leeches, medical leeches are very expensive. And so I bought like 15 of them and only half of them wanted to drink 
so I have to feed them myself. And so half of them got full and the other half were like, no, nah, I'm not hungry yet until they were all together. And then all of a sudden they became hungry. And so they start feeding on each other. So they can be very cannibalistic. You said feed them yourself. And I have to make a segue here. Are you just putting them on yourself? Are you? Yeah. Less? Yeah. So in some laboratories, they will get other animals to feed the leeches, but that's not, I don't think that's very fair. So I will feed them myself. Luckily, they only need to feed about once every six months. So it's not too bad. And it's not as expensive as like a dog or a cat. <laughs> I would imagine not. The vet bills are really low. Yes. Um, so when it feeds on you, you take it off. Does it hurt? Does it sting? Does it nothing? You feel nothing. Nothing. So it kind of feels like, you know, when you accidentally pull like a small hair on the back of your neck or on your arm, it kind of feels like this. But of course, you got things like a leech, right? You don't want your host to know you're there. So it actually has some kind of like anti-pain um, capabilities in its saliva. But no, I don't feel it at all. Um, and then when it's full, it just falls off. So the only problem, and I'm not saying go get a pet leech because it's not, don't do that. Um, their saliva has an anticoagulant, which is really important for medicine and why they're being used. So you will bleed and bleed and bleed and bleed and bleed until that enzyme is out of your blood. Huh. This is a good follow-up question to this. Uh, so the young family again, how much blood do they take? Do we know how much, like while they're feeding, not afterwards leaking out of you, but how much are they? Sure. Uh, so a leech will take around an ounce and a half. But it, it depends on the size of the leech, right? So usually they will fill up about 10 times their empty size. So one of my leeches will be maybe the as thin as my pinky. And when it's done, it will be like this wide. I mean, it gets, it's full. <laughs> this is fantastic. Sorry, this is so cool. Um, all right, we'll take one last question because it's a conservation question. And I always love these from John. So is climate change affecting leeches in various parts of the world? And you can segue this, like, do we know about leech numbers worldwide? Are they being affected? Are they being lost? Anything you know? Absolutely. So climate change is, in addition to human development, is really having an effect on their habitat. They need wetlands. And so without these wetlands, as with whether they're getting dried up from something that's getting too warm, or maybe the water is getting too hot for them. They're also very sensitive to temperature and also just human development, them filling up the swamps is all affecting leeches. There are actually some leeches that are critically endangered. Um, the medicinal leech in Europe, in some places where it used to be found, you can no longer find it. So it's it, there is some significant conservation that is being done to help protect the leech. And yes, climate change is unfortunately one of those. It's a, fa it's a factor for everything. Every animal we deal with, every time there's a conservation story, climate change plays a role, which is why it's so important to do things to, to Absolutely, mitigate. absolutely. Miss Matter, before we wrap up, uh, you've already highlighted a little bit of this, but is there a place we can send people watching live to learn more about you, about leeches? Where can we put some? I've already passed along your website in the chat bar and in the YouTube comment section so people can check that out and all the amazing work you do. So anywhere else we can find you and more about leeches? Oh, please. So Instagram and Facebook, I'm always there talking to people. And I also put stories up all the time with little fun quizzes so you can test your own knowledge. But I'm mainly on Instagram and Facebook if you want to chat with me or ask questions. Awesome. Well, again, that's stuff that you can find it through our site, which we link to. So do check that out. All right, this is fantastic. Thank you so, so much for joining us today. Yeah, we thank you everyone for taking the time to learn about leeches. Yeah, and for everyone tuning in on YouTube, again, SciComm Storytime every 2 p.m. Eastern for the next, you know, several weeks to come. So check us out then. And programs generally, five to eight sessions a day, amazing scientists, educators, and more. Mallory, have a wonderful rest of your day, and thanks again. Thanks. Thanks for everything you guys are doing. It really makes a difference. We really appreciate it, and uh, hope you can tune in for some of our other ones. <laughs> All right. Bye for now. Bye.